Hoffman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like most of us, they enjoy good times over again in pictures. Now, let's go to Disneyland USA to join Harriet and the boys. Hello. We're having a wonderful time. And best of all, we'll be saving all of it to enjoy again and again. You can, too, with a brownie movie camera like this. Ozzy loves this brownie movie camera because it's so easy to use. Even I can get movies with a professional touch. I can start with an overall shot like this. Then turn it. And get a medium shot. Another twist. <laughs> and here's a close-up of tonight's dinner. Brownie movie cameras are so easy to operate and so inexpensive. Why don't you put your family in movies? That's what we do. For big, clear, colorful, low-cost movies, see the Brownie turret movie camera, only $59.50, or as little as $6 down. Other brownie movie cameras cost as little as $3.50 down. Remember, your surest way to better movies is to insist on the name Kodak. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Hi. In case we all look a little younger on tonight's show, it's because it was filmed nearly seven years ago. In fact, it's all about David's 17th birthday. This smiling young fellow is David, as he was in those days, of course. And here's Ricky. Remember when he looked like this? As our story opens, Harriet is putting on a silly little hat. Oh, it is not, not silly. and In fact, it's very cute. It, it looks to me as if she's getting ready to go downtown shopping. Doesn't she look pretty, though? Thank you. Help you? Yes, I wish you would. Well, uh, what were you looking for? Well, that's where you can help me. I really don't know. I'm looking for a birthday gift for my older son. Today's his 17th birthday. Oh, so that's why Harriet came downtown. Uh, we bought Dave some seat covers for his jalopy, but I guess Harriet figured she'd like to get him something personal, too. It isn't that Harriet's hard to please, you understand, but sometimes she gets talking about the boys, and, well, you know how mothers are. Well, fathers too, I guess, and even grandfathers. At least the salesman fell right into the conversation and started reminiscing about his grandchildren. Uh, my wife and I are just lucky we have a lot of pictures to remember it all by. We took all the home movies of the kids, too. They're always nice to have. Oh, aren't they, though? We have some wonderful pictures of David. My husband gave him a movie camera the day he was born. I'll bet you have some good shots. Oh, we certainly do. Although David feels he's a little overexposed in some of the early ones. <laughs> well, they're always nice to look back on. They certainly are. Say, David might like one of these sports sweaters. They're always popular. Oh, that's nice. Well, that might appeal more to Ricky, our younger son. Mm, how old is he? Thirteen. Though, according to Ricky, he's pushing fourteen. <laughs> it's funny how kids always want to seem older. You think David will like this sweater, then? Oh, I think so. It's a little gay for college, but it's just right for high school. Besides, if he doesn't like it, I'll be glad to make a refund. Oh, that won't be necessary. If it's too young for David, he can give it to his father. I'm sure he'll like it. David? Oh, hello, little man. Just looking at my beard. Looking at or looking for? <laughs> what do you mean? I have a pretty good sized growth here. You got a pretty good sized imagination, too. Well, it just so happens I was thinking about shaving again today. Shaving again? You mean you've already shaved once today? Well, not exactly today. Then when exactly? 
Oh, to be exact, a week ago last Tuesday. I don't see what you're so worried about. Well, when a guy gets to be older, he has to look out for those things. You seem to have forgotten it's my birthday today. Hey, that's right. Happy birthday, my boy. I just happen to have a little present for you. Don't go away. Well, I must admit this comes as quite a pleasant surprise. Just a little token of my steam. You mean your esteem? No, I mean my steam. I'm boiling mad, boy. What's your trouble? I wish I could keep this present for myself. Oh, it must be pretty good. What is it? Please. I couldn't think of what to get you, so I made out this personal check. Oh, gee, thanks. How much is it for? Please, it's not polite to ask. It's a gift. I'll find out when I cash it anyway. Come on, how much is it for? Would you say that a dollar would be more than enough? Yeah, I must admit I would. Well, that's good. This is for 50 cents. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take it anyway. Don't mention it. Buy yourself some sort of little knick-knack with my compliments. Oh, that's very nice. You think I look any older? Not much. I look over 17, though, wouldn't you say? Uh, I don't know. Do you think maybe somebody might believe I was 18 or possibly 19? You wouldn't be thinking of that new girl in town, would you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Hi, boys. Hi, oh, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pa. Hi. Your mother has a little extra present for the birthday boy. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> she didn't have to do this. She got me the seat covers and all. Well, it's your mother's idea. She thought you might like a little something extra. Gee, it's swell. Hey, it's from the campus shop. Can I open it now? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Boy, this is really turned out to be a big day for me. Well, you turned out to be a big guy. Seventeen years old. I hope you like it. Oh, Your father it's... wasn't sure. It's swell, Mom. Uh, if you don't care for it, Dave, we can always exchange it, you know. No, it's fine. Thanks a lot, Pa. You don't think it's too juvenile for you? Oh, no, it's swell, Mom. I do like to look a little older, if possible, though. He's trying to make a big impression on one of the older girls. Her name is Sally Patterson. She's Betty Barker's cousin from Chicago. You ought to see her, boy. Girl. <laughs> Is this a new girlfriend of yours, Dave? Oh, I sure wish he was. I only met her once, the other day. She's kind of an older girl, very sophisticated. What do you mean, Derek? Oh, back in Chicago, she used to go out with college men and all. I guess that lets you out. What do you mean, when I first saw her, she smiled at me? Was that before or after she patted you on the head? <laughs> Never mind, Ricky. Anyway, she sure is a nice girl. Hope she liked the flowers I sent her. Oh, did you send her flowers, Dave? Yes, sir. I thought that would be kind of sophisticated. What kind of flowers did you send her? A small bunch of violets. I didn't want to get anything that was too ostentatious. Man, dig that nervous vocabulary. <laughs> oh, I enclosed a card, too. To Sally from an unknown admirer, David Nelson. This boy is a real go-getter. Why don't you get lost, Ricky? Why don't you both get lost until lunch is ready? Come on, let's go, Affine. I'm right behind you, Dad. <laughs> How about that, sending a bouquet? <laughs> I guess he's really trying to make an impression on her. Yeah. He says she's quite a bit older than he is. I, I wonder how old she really is. Oh, I don't know, but if she's so much older, I'm sure she'll realize it's just a younger boy's infatuation. You really think so? Oh, sure. Besides, he'll probably get over it in a couple of days. Yeah, I guess you're right. Not only that, a girl who's out with college men like that, I don't think she'd be very interested in a high school boy. I'll get it. I was going downstairs anyway. Hello? Yes, it is. Oh, hello, Betty. Tonight? Yeah, I guess so, if she wants to. Okay, thanks. So long, Betty. Some good news? That was Betty Barker. She wanted to know if her cousin could come over tonight. Oh, you mean Sally, the girl from Chicago? Yes, ma'am. What does she want? I don't know. Betty didn't say. You don't think she's mad at me about the flowers, do you? Oh, well, not unless girls have changed all of a sudden. What time is she coming? Well, she said she'd come over sometime after dinner tonight. Who's this? Oh, Sally, the new girl in town. Oh, we can have a party or something? Oh, no. Of course no. not. She doesn't even know it's my birthday. I hope she didn't find out how old I am. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I don't want her to know I'm only 17. Well, how old is she, anyway? I don't know. But Betty says she only goes out with older guys. She's probably about 18 or 19. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. There's certainly nothing wrong with your being 17. There is when the girl's 18 or 19. I wonder what she's coming over here for. She's probably coming over here to babysit. <laughs> I hope she doesn't find out. 
Well, there are only three of us to tell, and I certainly won't. And I'm sure your father won't. What about you, Ricky? Have you cashed that check yet? <laughs> Thorny? Oh, hi, Hoss. <laughs> hi. Are you looking for me? No, looking for David. Well, you won't find him down there. Go <laughs> ahead, help yourself. Thanks, Hoss. <laughs> Uh, David went downtown. It's his birthday today, and Ricky gave him a check for 50 cents, so David's treating him to a soda. <laughs> well, I got a birthday present here for David. I want to see if you like it. Oh. Is that a horn of some sort? Yeah, it's for his car. Ah, let's listen to this mellow sound. <laughs> hey, that's almost as loud as the seat covers Harriet and I gave. <laughs> what do you call this, a moose call or something? Ah, no, no, it's a wolf whistle. I got the idea last week when Kath and I were walking down the street. A hot rod drove up and honked. It's the first time I ever heard of one. Oh. A couple of high school boys whistling at Catherine? <laughs> no, a couple of high school girls whistling at me. <laughs> Find that a little hard to believe. <laughs> well, why don't you stick around? Dave will be back in a few minutes. Well, I can't, Oz. Kath and I are going out for dinner, and I better get home and get cleaned up. Well, I'll give him the horn if you'd like. Oh, swell, Oz. And wish him happy birthday for me, will you? Okay. Be sure to tell him to save a nice piece of cake for Uncle Thorny. <laughs> Oz, on second thought, you know, it might take the edge off if I don't give this to David myself. Well, that's right. I'll give it to him when he comes back. Well, no, Oz, I've changed my mind. I'll give it to him. I told you, Thorny, I'd give it to him. Look, Oz, if you don't mind, I paid for this out of my own pocket. Now, I'll wait a minute, Thorny. You gave it to me. I'm the boy's father. I'll give it to him when he comes Oz, in. Oz, you mind? I'll yeah, give it to I'll him. I'll give it to him. <laughs> rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. What can a little girl do on a rainy day? Well, let's invite a special friend to help explore the magic world of make-believe. And what do you know? Rainy days are fun. Who needs that old son anyway? Mother doesn't need it. With her new brownie star flash camera, all she has to do is pop in a flash bulb, aim, and shoot. She'll always get the right amount of light, right where she wants it. And what wonderful pictures she'll get, sharp and clear, time after time. Black and white snapshots, color snapshots, and beautiful color slides. Think of the fun you could have, indoors and out, with a new Brownie Star Flash camera. It costs only $9.95, complete with built-in flash holder. Another good reason to insist on the name Kodak. Don't be too long, dear. I'm going to get dinner started right away. Uh, oh, uh, Harriet, have you seen my new blue coat any place? You know, the, the cashmere? Oh, yes. David borrowed it to wear tonight. He thought it made him look older. Oh, well, I'll wear the brown coat. Oh, and my maroon tie. I can't seem to find it. Oh, it goes very well with your blue coat. <laughs> well, at least the boy has good taste. Oh, hi, Pop. Hope you don't mind. I borrowed some of your things. Oh, no. Hey, you look fine, Dave. You need anything else? Oh, no, thanks. The coat and shirt and tie is plenty. Oh. Shirt? Uh, didn't you have a shirt of your own? Not with French cuffs. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, Pop. Can I... The cufflinks are right over there. <laughs> Hi, Pop. Hi, Pop. <laughs> hey, what's going on around here? Confusing, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Hey, David, you want to play some football? No, thanks. I don't want to get my clothes dirty. Care. They aren't yours anyway. As long as you've got so much energy, you can help me set the table. Come on. Me and my big mouth. Pop? Mm hmm? Do you think I look any older than 17? Well, I don't know, Dave. If you're worried about that little girl from Chicago, I don't think I'd try to convince her you're older than you really are. I think I'd just try to impress her with the fact that even though you are only 17, you're quite a guy for that age. What would you suggest I do? Well, girls always seem to like the athletic type, and you're quite an athlete. What could I do? I couldn't answer the door in my football uniform. Ricky does it, but I can't. <laughs> See, I have an idea. You know, we took a lot of very good home movies of you this summer up at the lake. 
You were horseback riding and swimming and playing baseball and diving and all that stuff? Yes, sir. Well, why don't you run those pictures for her tonight? Wouldn't that be kind of like showing off? Well, I, I suppose it would. I feel kind of funny dragging out the projector and showing Sally a lot of pictures of myself. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. Of course, somebody else could show her the pictures. <laughs> oh, that's a thought. Oh, don't you worry about it, son. I'll make sure she sees the pictures. Oh, thanks a lot, Pop. Okay. I was 17 myself, you know. That was a very nice dinner, Harriet. Oh, thank you, dear. Yeah, it sure was, Mom. Thank you, Dave. Now, Mom, any time you say, it's up to you. Well, I don't care. How about it, Pop? Yes, yes. Hurry up, bring it in. I'm starved. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear David, happy birthday to you. <laughs> For me? <laughs> Please okay. make a wish. Go! Oh, windy old bird, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, this sure was a swell birthday party, Mom. Oh, thank you, dear. This cake was wonderful, too. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I better take it out before Sally sees the candles and counts them. Are you still worried that she's going to find out that you're only 17? Oh, well, kind of. But Pop has a pretty good idea. He suggested that we show her some movies of me swimming and stuff so she'll think I'm older than I am. You think that'll make a hit with her? Well, Pop seems to think so, and he understands women pretty well. Oh, he does? And he's been married for 18 years. I guess you know that, though. <laughs> I was an 18-year-old girl myself once. I've just been trying to think of what would have made a hit with me. I think I have an idea. Oh, hi, Sally. Come on in. Hello, David. Let me take your coat. Oh, this is my father. Hello. Hello, Mr. Nelson. Won't you go and sit down? Yeah, I'll be today. Oh, thanks, Bob. <clears throat> oh, this is my brother, Ricky. How do you do? Hello, Ricky. <laughs> Pardon me. Certainly. Did you have much trouble finding the house? Oh, no. Oh, who's the boy next door? Well, that's Will Thornbury. How'd you know there's a boy next door? He's gone away for the weekend. Oh, that's strange. What do you mean? Well, as I was coming up your steps, a car pulled out of the driveway next door, and it had one of those wolf whistle horns on it. <laughs> Gee, I don't know who it could have been. Will's away. Maybe it was some friend of his. Although it's the first time I've ever heard one on a four-door sedan. <laughs> this is Sally, isn't it? Yes, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, this is my mother. How do you do? Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't here when you came. I was in the den setting up the projector. I thought maybe Sally would like to see some of our home movies. Say, that's an idea. Oh, I'd love to see them. Well, I'll make sure everything's ready. We have some wonderful pictures of David. Oh, he's swimming and, and diving and, and riding horseback and, and all sorts of things. I think you'll like them there, right in the den. I'm afraid you'll be bored stiff. Oh, no, it sounds exciting. Say, you didn't waste any time. Oh, I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Wasn't this a good idea of mine? Yes, it was. I hope you don't mind if I change your plans a little. In what way? You'll see. Oh, really, we're going to see, Mom? This is going to be David at the swimming pool. Ricky, would you turn off the lights, please? Okay. Here we go. Hey, what's this? Yeah, who's that? Hey, wait a minute. That's the wrong reel, Mom. No, dear. That's you at the swimming pool. You were two years old. Oh, how about that? Look at that little guy. You certainly were a cute baby, David. Oh, no. Why, David, I'm surprised at you. Oh, remember that? Pretty young to be driving a car, boy. <laughs> Do you remember that? That was his second birthday. Sure. We were in Columbus, Ohio. Did those films have sure held up well. That was 1938. That's right. Isn't he a sturdy little fellow, though? Pop, 
about those golden curls? Who did your hairstyling, dearie? <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> Man, I did that crazy coat on, Dad. <laughs> You're very pretty there. Thank you. Hiya, Baldy. <laughs> Yet? Yeah, but those were very nice pictures of you. I certainly enjoyed them. Weren't you a chubby little rascal? Well, why don't you kids go into the living room? I'll put this stuff together and take it upstairs. Oh, all right, I'll give you a hand. Harry, that was a dirty trick to play on Dave. Oh, I did him a favor. You wait and see. Today is your 17th birthday, isn't it? Yeah, now you know. I wasn't sure how old you are. Yep, 17 today. It was awfully nice of you to send me those violets, David. Oh, that's okay. Glad you liked them. That was one of the reasons I stopped by. I wanted to thank you for them. The other reason was to invite you to my birthday party next Wednesday. Can you make it? Oh, yeah. Gee, thanks a lot. This may sound kind of impolite, but how old are you going to be, 18? No, not quite 18. A 17? No, not 17 either. You mean you'll be 16? Ask her once more and she's mine. Get lost, will you, Ricky? I was just trying to liven things up. I suppose you think 16's awfully young. Oh, heck no. But the way your cousin talked, I thought you were a lot older. Oh, I asked her to say all those things because I thought you were a lot older. You look just like a college man the day I met you. I did? <laughs> This looks like a wonderful movie at the Bijou, David. Maybe Sally'd like to go. Oh, how about it? Oh, I'd love to. Would you excuse me for a minute? I'll be right down. Excuse me, Mom. Hurry up, David. We don't want to be late. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going, Jazzbo? Somebody mentioned movies, so here I am. <laughs> well, you know the old saying, Ricky. Two's company, three's crowd. Don't you think they need a chaperone? No, I don't think so. Thanks, Mr. Nelson, but I'll just carry it. Okay. Why, I never get to go any place. You can go with us the next time, Ricky. Well, I'm all set. Oh, David, what a beautiful sweater. It's so athletic looking. Oh, thanks. Mom got it for me for my birthday. Well, good night, Pop. Good night, Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. Good night, good night Sally. Mrs. Nelson. Good night, good night, Sally. Bye, Ricky. Good night. Fine thing. Here I am, all dressed up and no place to go. Hey, wait a minute. I know a girl who'd love to go to the movies with you. Oh, you do, Mom? Mm-hmm. Of course, she's a slightly older girl. You mean she's about 17? Well, she's 17 once upon a time. You mean she's 18? Well, she was 18 once, too. Hey, how old is this girl? Uh, she doesn't look a day over 21. Oh, do you know her, Pop? Well, uh, sometimes I wonder. I'll tell you this much, though. She's not going out with a dasher like you unless her husband goes along as a chaperone. I'll get my coat. <laughs> Next week's adventure will be brought to you by our alternate sponsor, the Quaker Oats Company. Now, a word about one of their many fine products, Kennel Ration. The first time you saw him, you knew he was the one dog in the world for you. At first, he wagged his tail. He slept. And he ate. And he grew strong and handsome on Kennel Ration, America's favorite dog food. Kennel Ration is packed with lean red meat. It contains wholesome steaks, chops, and roasts of U.S. government inspected horse meat, plus every nutrient a dog is known to need, the kind of protein-rich food today's dogs require. Yes, there's no other dog in the world like yours. No other dog food like Kennel Ration. So doesn't he, uh, don't they, deserve the best? 
Put your trust in kennel ration with lean red meat. More people do. We hope you enjoyed our show tonight. At least it gives you an idea of the way things were around the Nelson House seven years ago. And now to bring you up to date, here's Ricky singing a great tune from his current album, Ricky Sings Spirituals. It's called Glory Train. I want to ride that glory train. I want to ride, ride, ride that glory train. Yes, all I want to do when my life on earth is through is to get aboard and ride that glory train. Oh, there's a railroad train that's leaving, just rolling down the track. And the passengers aboard are boys, they're never coming back. to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, who also present the Ed Sullivan Show on another network. And when you travel, remember the quickest way to get your color slides or movies home to enjoy is to use Kodak prepaid processing mailer. Good night. Crippled children need all the help you can give them. With skilled treatment, youngsters with crippling conditions can have the opportunity to grow up with other children and share the experiences of normal everyday living. Easter seals help crippled children overcome physical handicaps. There are thousands of crippled boys and girls getting the chance to live active, useful lives because of Easter seal help. Please continue that help. Give now to Easter seals and give a crippled child a chance. You can address your gift to crippled children, care of your post office. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.